I used to like create educational materials. We had back, and this was back about 15 years ago, we developed this heart risk factor awareness program, and it was around the, the Music Man. I know I'm dating myself here, but has anybody seen the Music Man? And T, and it rhymes with P, and that stands for pool, right? <laughs> you young ones, you came out, it was a Broadway musical back in the late 50s, early 60s. It's actually a pretty cool movie. I'd never seen it until I started getting into this, but Shirley Jones, Ronnie Howard, is actually, it's like one of his first movies. But we did this whole thing, it was really cool. And we actually took, so we, so it's, you know, the, the whole concept of the movie is, you know, that pool parlor is tr spells trouble. That's the T of the P. So we did an acronym with all the risk factors. So blood pressure and oils and we, we call it body comp roundness. And we just made a game out of it. So, and, you know, just to try to get people more interested and they could kind of, go around the bases, they could earn their letters or you know, get rid of their letter, whatever the case was. And, and again, for the younger um, patients in the crowd, they didn't necessarily resonate, but I worked in cardiac rehab, so everybody got it. <laughs> but one of the nurses I worked with, and this is the only time I'll throw a nurse under the bus, not really under the bus, but she came to me and she said, we can't use this, the reading level is too high. And like, ooh. And she, you know, started, that was the first time I'd ever even heard of health literacy. And she's like, you know, we have this, you know, public health priority and da da da. And your stuff is at an eighth grade reading level and it has to be at a fifth grade reading level. I'm like, okay. So if I went back and I literally did a find and replace and I changed cholesterol and triglycerides to fats and I changed carbohydrates to sugar, mm -hmm. and I changed sodium to salt, no. would that work? No. She said, oh yeah, that'll work, because it'll take it to a fifth grade reading level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and I, I said, yeah, but I want to be teaching them about saturated fat, and monounsaturated fat, and complex carbohydrates. And she said, you can't do that. And so, the point is, you know, obviously we've become a little bit more nuanced. She was very focused on reading level. Reading level is important. Don't walk away saying um, that reading level isn't important. But it's only one of those components to this. There are other things that you should be also considering beyond the reading level. Okay, and just, and frankly, changing saturated fat to fat kind of changes the meaning doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. okay, there's, there's good fats and bad fats, there's good carbs and bad carbs. So it was important to me to break down for the patient and help them understand the difference between those two terms. And we got in the middle of that, all this confusion about reading level. Okay? That started my health literacy journey. So, yeah, I didn't hit, so, you know, can't use big words like cholesterol, carbohydrates, saturated fats, Think about it. How many of you have children? Most of you, not all of you. Okay. If we use that same approach with our kids in actually learning to read, then what we would do is we would build a society where it wasn't really important to read. And we would kind of create workarounds and they could kind of live their life without ever having to read. And I think all of us would say, well, that's crazy. That's not going to happen. You know, we've, we've got to figure out a different way to do this. So that's what I'm suggesting here is just think, think beyond the reading level. The reading level is important, you know, but it is, it's only one thing. It's the, you know, it's the length of the words, the size of the sentence, how many syllables, but there's other, you know, especially with a complex condition like diabetes or cardiovascular disease or cancer, you know, at some point, those are the terms the doctor's using, okay? So, if, if the patient has never heard those terms and he hears it from the doctor, it's even, I think it makes it even more confusing. Story two. So then, so this is not a nurse, this is a teacher, okay? They're equally um, at stake here. Uh, the hospital I worked at, uh, as I was getting prepared to do this study, they said, hey, we're gonna bring in a health literacy expert and give a talk to our, our medical staff. I'm like, cool, 
sign me up, I'm coming to that. And her big claim to fame was she had been a teacher. She was a retired teacher, uh, a high school teacher. So she did her presentation, and it was all on concepts I'm sure you're familiar with. But simplify, simplify, simplify. You've got to use plain language. You know, just use bullet points, use a picture. Don't get too complicated. Don't tell the patient anything they don't need to know. And it was, it was all classic stuff. So afterwards I said, but how do you actually build the literacy skills in these patients? And she said, oh, you can't build health literacy skills. We're talking about heart failure patients now. Okay, we weren't talking about kids. We were talking about heart failure patients. So the average age was about 75. She said, you can't build health literacy skills in these patients. You're just going to frustrate them, which frustrated me. Uh, and she needs to meet my mom. Okay? <laughs> my mom is about as low tech as you can get. Okay? She was born in 1937 on the Illinois River. Uh, she's now able to post a picture on Facebook and she booked a trip by herself to Ireland last summer. Rented a car, the 76 year old lady at the time driving on the wrong side of the road. Can you imagine that? Okay. But she did it. She learned. How many of you know senior citizens that are on Facebook, they're, they're on Instagram, they're posting, they're, they're, they're doing stuff, okay? Well, if they can figure that out, then why can't they figure out how to manage their blood pressure? So 